Hello and welcome. This is yet another interesting edition of the exclusive. I am Charles Philip Wakalam and I'm your host. The program will have a charismatic woman leader. She is a human rights activist, a politician, an entrepreneur, and police community relations committee national coordinator for women who combines strong personality with human attitude and love. She's a strong and devoted Christian who is ruled by the love of Christ to serve and love people. She has been a faithful Anglican all her life. She is an avid reader of the Bible and a strong believer in it. She is Princess Nana Ngozi Dahiru. She was a member of the Guild of Steward in the Anglican Diocese of Abuja, but right now she serves as a Bible study coordinator. We shall be having an exclusive interview with her on this show. You're welcome, ma. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you it's for coming. To be here. Yes, thank you very much for coming. All right, I have given a brief introduction about you, uh, but it's always uh, best to hear <laughs> from the horse's mouth. So, if I may ask, <laughs> can we meet you, ma? You know, take well. us down the memory lane, uh, your place of birth, and the rest of it. I'm Princess Nanangazi Dahiru. Okay. I was born into the family of Prince and Princess Bennett and Elizabeth Mboma from Ivato North. I call quite precisely. Mm, okay. I was born at Onesha in the year 1953 to this, my beloved parents, who are of blessed memory. I was at 13, the war broke out. Because we are the people that saw the civil war. I was a Christian. I was born into a Christian home. My late mother would never allow us to get up in the morning. We first pray morning prayer. Then we go to the church. Aglican. Christ Church, Anisha, was opposite our house at Old Market Road. We we'll go there for 5, 5 a.m. prayer after we have done in the house. And she was a serious believer in Christ that what Christ cannot do for her, nobody can do it. That once you have Christ, you have everything. That even if you die, you know, those days, it's not, we don't have this. A clear understanding of the Bible like we have now. We don't have all this, uh, I'm a believer that we have now. But, okay. but yes, but as of that time, she still believed that having Christ as her Lord is all she needs wow. to survive the troubles of life. And that imparted a lot to me as a person. Mm. After the war in 1970, I have to move with some relations to Kano. Because it was said that when you get to the north, there are easy jobs. No matter the little yeah, level of education, as long as you can read and write, you will get a job. Yeah, you can still be doing your yeah, going to school and be, you know, they were so, they were so backward then. Okay. In education, they're not an us. So, it was in Kano. I met my husband, my late husband. Mm. We got married. I was 21 when I got married to him. A good man he was. He never asked me to become a, a Muslim. No. If I were the Christian I am now, my husband should have converted to Christianity. I should have had all my children as a Christian. Mm. But I didn't know, apart from that little my mom imparted to me, war of three years of war, it was so terrible. So when people who have not seen war are say, talking about war in Nigeria, I say, look at these people. They don't know what they're asking for. Mm. No, they don't. It's not something anybody can wish for. War. 
is a destroy is a destroyer. So I got married to him. He said, You can retain your religion. But I couldn't retain my religion because I believe that a family should have one religion. See, coming off from my lack of knowledge of whom Christ is, was then, not now, it's in my past, I became a Muslim. Mm. But I do my prayers five times a day. I never found spiritual fulfillment. Maybe because I didn't study the Quran from A, B, C, D to know, to know it. I discovered that spiritually I was still empty. Then when tribulations arose, I said, wow, how do I cope? That was when I remembered what my mother taught us. I said, is it real that this Christ can really carry my load? Mm -hmm. After being a Muslim for 15 years, I went to Mecca in 1978. I was a real Muslim, a good boy. I went back to church in 1991. I became a communicant. Because I just, when I started again, when I picked my Bible, I want to pray. I say, God, show me where to use to pray. It wasn't easy. Yes. yes. And I couldn't go back to church by force. No. I told my late husband, I said, I'm not finding spiritual fulfillment in what I'm doing. I say, Muslim, I want to go back to church. He didn't take me serious. I went to his father because then we have left service. We are now in Okene. Okay. I went to his father, my late father-in-law. Very good man. Very, very good man. I used to tell people that if there is heaven, if that man no make heaven, no heaven. That's my own belief. I don't know. I might be wrong. And I still believe that my, my Jesus is superior to every other. Whatever you say you are doing, Jesus is the key. So I went to my late father and I said, I want to go back to church. He said, no, you are such a good Muslim. I said, I'm not. I'm not fulfilled. Mm. I said, I don't have this spiritual fulfillment. He said, go and think about it. I left him. I went back to my room. I have this Bible smaller than this. Those um, Gideon Bibles, Gideon that Bible. is Sam yes. and only Psalms and the... Uh, and New Testament. New Testament. So, it's on top of my table. Just have covered it. I cleaned it. So, I said, God, I come back to you. Accept me by Christ. Mm. And I stopped doing Salah. Stop praying as a Muslim. If I want to read, I'll open my Bible like this. Anywhere I see, I read. I open, I read. Then I pray. Because I have, I know how to pray before. My mother taught me, taught us. That is why it is important for you to teach your children. I will open, I will pray. After one year, meanwhile, I go to church when I'm invited by the church. Okay. For program, harvest, this, this, I go. Because uh, Okene is a place that both Christians and Muslims, they live together, they mix together. There is no discrimination about religion. Yes. yes. So I go. The priests, the bishops, they were, ah, this is our own, this is our own. So after one year, I went back to, I got up one morning. After prayer, I came out, I told my husband, I said, if I die before you, bury me as a Christian. Don't bury me as a Muslim. For the past one year, I've been a Christian. Mm. I've not been doing Salah. Are you sorry? 
<laughs> so I went to his father again. When I went to the palace to meet him. He said, why are you here this early? I said, I want to tell you what brought me one year ago has brought me again. I said, I want to tell you, sir, if I die, if I die before you, say no, you can't die before me. You have to bury me. Can you die before me? But what is the matter? I say, if I die before you, please bury me as a Christian. Don't let them bury me as a Muslim. Because if you bury me as a Muslim, I will go to hellfire. I won't have anything to answer. Which means I've been doing double. He looked at me. He said, what matters about religion is your faith, your belief in that which you are serving, you are, through which you are serving God. He said, with this strong conviction of yours, you will go back to church. Oh. He said, God is one. If God had wanted one religion, Ishmael wouldn't have been born. And after Ishmael was born, Isaac wouldn't have born. But he knows why he did it like that. And they are all children of Abraham, God's friend. He says, so, you will go back to church. I'm coming to tell your husband. Oh. Immediately I left the palace. He followed me to her own house. And they addressed my husband by calling him by name. He said, I've permitted her because he was a man of authority. Yes. So I have permitted her to start going back to church. That was how I went back to church. Mm. My joy, every, any, any reading, Bible reading book I see that will teach you, show you places to read, I buy. My Christian cassettes. I started educating myself in the word of God. And I never regretted it. That wow. was how I went back to the church. Okay. And I think... I was able to do that by the grace of God because I have that foundation. If I don't have that foundation, there wouldn't have anything for me to build on top. So we must teach our children. Muslim children, the real Muslims, not all these bandits, are the last people, hardest people you can convert to any other religion. Because they were too taught. They are too taught. From one year old, a male child, as the father is going to mosque, is carrying the child. The mother is praying the child. If he's a girl, she's sitting down, watching what she's doing. Until she gets to the age when she can be taught, read like this, say like this, say like this, she will start. They inculcate it on their children more than we Christians do. Okay. So my going back to Christ has helped my family a lot. My children are Muslim. But they believe that just as they read in the Quran that Jesus Christ if you don't believe in Jesus Christ as a Muslim, you are not a good Muslim, there is no heaven for you. So when I now start to discuss Bible, we discuss, I say, Mommy, why are you, you come back? I say, I'm not coming back. Christ is superior. Is the in thing. I say in our Bible, there is nowhere they say, if you don't believe in Muhammad, Peace of God be upon him. But they say, the Quran says, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ and Nabi Isa, I'm not making heaven. I said, can you see the spirituality of my own? Wow. And when you see them, you don't believe they are not, they are, they are Muslims. Yes. Wow. Uh. Quite a journey, I must say. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. You will permit me to take you back a little bit again to your growing up. Um, I want to know how was. Did you 
did you have a dream? Did you pursue the dream? Did you achieve it? And I, I grew under a mother. Yes, if I may add also, what was your perception of Nigeria growing up then? So, Nigeria was very sweet. Okay. Yes. Very, very sweet. We have Hausa people living with us at Onesha. We mix. We play together. Their parents and our parents mix. There was no problem. Everybody does his own. We have Yorubas. We have a just. We have every tribe in Onesha. No. Every tribe. Because that is where, that was where I grew up. Yes. Every tribe. And we live in harmony and peace. Christmas, the children will come to us to eat Christmas rice. Salah, we go to them to eat Salah ram. <laughs> it was so peaceful. It was so peaceful. My mother was a businesswoman. Okay. And she was a very hard disciplinarian. She doesn't, there is no no when she tells you this is the right thing to do. She wasn't lazy, she was hardworking, and she brought all of us up in that manner. In the morning before you go to school, you have your own chores to do, and you must do it and finish it, and you must not go to late, go to school late from her house. It's forbidden, or your body will tell you. <laughs> when we come back from school, the moment you eat your food, our homeworks are done in the night. Yeah. Because once you eat your food, you go to the shop and carry your own to the okra that you will sell and go and sell. She brings it in, in bales from Abba. Uh -huh. She was a serious businesswoman. Hardworking, no laziness. No laziness. No. And God was with her. So she trained us in that way that you must walk. She used to train women. When they marry in their family, they bring them for training. When they marry in my own family, they bring them for training. Wow. Our house was always full of people. And I used to hear her tell them, don't look at your beauty. She was yeah. a beautiful woman. See, don't look at your beauty. It can deceive you. It's what you can do with your hands, with your brain, that makes you whom you are. Not your beauty. That's right. That, and I believe it, I pick it up. So don't waste all the day watching, looking at yourself at the mirror, looking at the mirror. What are you looking at? Mm -hmm. Once you do your face in the morning, you go at it the next day, before you look at the mirror again, so that you, you are not deceived by that facial beauty. That's right. That was the training I had. There is no excuse for failure. She was not educated. But when you come from school, you bring your book when we come back in the evening, you have eaten when it's time for your uh, homework, you bring your book and show her. She knows where they are good. If there is 10, and you have nine good, you will tell her why you fail one. <laughs> That's what parents don't do today. Wow. Yes, I brought my children up that manner too. So why must you fail this one? We first ask, you, did anybody get it all? You say yes. You say, is that person stronger than you? Does he eat better than you? Is the mother bigger than me? You say no. You say, then why? Okay. Yeah. The father of that child is stronger than your father. He said, no. He said, why would you not get it all? You are receiving beating. No, <laughs> no excuse for failure. And today, I'm still like that. You don't give me an excuse why you fail. Tell me why we must succeed. My organization, if my manager wants to say, ah, mommy, with this, let me explain. I say, you want to explain failure? Leave my office. You can't explain failure. 
you have failed, you have failed. I'm sorry. How do I do it? That is what I expect from you, not explaining to me failure. With the failure, with the explanation to your failure, change the situation. Well, we are not pampered as children. But mm. today, our children are mommies and daddies. Why parents are babies? Mm. Wow. Even when a child is doing wrong, you look at that child. You say, ah, now the, that is what is happening these days. No. It was happening then. But it's only to parents that accept it that it happens to their children. Wow. So <clears throat> I was brought up by a tough woman of blessed memory. And I thank her for that. I always pray, say, God, please. I know they don't pray for the dead. Please keep my mother well wherever she is. I know one day we'll meet. Wow, okay, but, but, but if I must still press further, what, what, what would be your... Because sometimes when people talk, they remember, okay, now you, you, you've told us about your mom, the children. I wanted to be more, more successful than her. Okay. I wanted to be more mentor than her, mentor more people than she mentored. Wow. That was all I desired. Okay. I wanted to mentor more people. I used to tell her, I said, Mom, when I grow up, I will mentor more people than you, and I'll be more hardworking than you. Wow. Okay. It's safe to say your mom <laughs> is your role model. Yes, yeah, she's my role model. Yeah, wow. Well. Okay, but, um, let's go back to your um, journey into Islam and back to Christianity. It, uh, this conversion is uh, one that doesn't really happen without um, maybe family crisis. Uh, some people agree and others don't agree, or even you even face rejection and all that. Uh, particularly from from the eastern part of Nigeria, it doesn't happen often. How was it? What did your family say when you decided? Because um, you said you 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 were not forced, you were not um, you were not pushed to convert to Islam. You decided on your own. How was it even? How did your family Interest, react to you marrying a Muslim? Interestingly, when I came home, when my late husband proposed to me, I went to the east and I told my father I found a husband. He said. You are not looking for a husband. <laughs> People have been coming to marry you, you refuse. Wow. I said, the way you people are beating wives, I cannot marry an Igbo man. You know, as a child, I saw in, the, in our compound, there are so many men there with their wives and children. When a woman is beating his wife, she'll be holding the rap. You know, my Igbo people with tie big rapper, yes. you know it. They will roll it, see, see, at the men, hand. Yes. The men will carry it like yes. the woman that they are hitting boom, boom, will be holding the rapper. Ah, <laughs> our Lord, your rapper will lose, they are beating you. Not only one father in that compound, all of them, including mine. I'm saying this so that people will know that whatever you do has effect on children. That's right. I have no regret of the step I took, marry my late husband. If he comes back, if we are to come back to life again, I will still marry him. But this time he will follow me to serve Christ. Mm. Yes. So I told myself, I don't want to marry an evil man. You know now, Papa? Because my dad was a, lib a very liberal man. Okay. We are free to talk to him. He fought in Second World War. We are free to talk to him. It wasn't hard. And by then, my mother was already late. My mother died when I was 13. Wow. Yes. So I told him, I said, I want to marry this man. He's from Okene. All they know is I was, I said, their, their village is after Awuchi. And he's a Muslim. The only thing my dad, my dad was a civilized woman being now. He said, would you do Islam? so that your children will have a religion. I said, I'm prepared to do it. 
is a good person. That was all. Wow. Then uh, the only problem we should have had was when the, fa the, the nun came. They really suffered him. They came, the father sent this trip, sent this, sent this. My late uncle, my father's late senior brother said, uh, they are not doing anything until we see your father. You say you have a father. And my father's, they are all late, junior brother, who was like a priest, was a warden in the church at his age, old age. He wears suit to church as a businessman. He said, we have to screen these people. Well, my father said, I'm not screening anything. <laughs> she brought a husband and yeah. married, she will marry. Wow. So my late, my late father-in-law later came with his chiefs. They said, hey, now we are handing her over to you. Wow. They didn't collect excess dowry from them, no. Because in our family, there are months you pay for a wife. We don't sell our daughters. In fact, so most of the tradition up to today, we follow our father's footsteps. They follow their father's footsteps. If we come to marry, all we need is truth. We can even really run you and do everything. And pray for you. Go and prosper because you must prosper. So it wasn't a problem. In fact, when we were going after the whole thing, the ram that was used to give me this nana you are asking of was provided by my father. They carried it in one of the boot of the cars we took to East. Mm. Told my father, late father, I love both of them are late. He said, Where you go? Because he knows about Islam a bit. You know, Anisha? Yeah. <laughs> we mix so well. Say, when you use, a lot of people use this to give them. Go and change. Let her, let her not stay with that religion. Mm. Wow. He was working with Mobile Oil, wasn't a soldier. That is the way. My marriage, I didn't have any problem with my family. No, I didn't. I came out straight open. My, late, my senior brother was in Kano. My, senior, my late senior sister was in Kano. So they all knew him before I went to him. So they have they have been that supportive voice. My father was that kind of a man. He doesn't force his children to do anything. No. He doesn't intimidate his children. He will tell you whatever you see there, you see at home. Or he told me, no, you are not coming back to this house. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't want to come back to your house, sir. <laughs> and that was that. Wow. When, they were, when it was time for them to pay their, they didn't even pay up to what's supposed to be paid to our family at that time. My, my uncles, were, my father said, do you know whether they pay money in their village, where they are coming from? Do you know whether they pay money? Mm -hmm. What is your problem? But he, he relates, my late husband and my late father were like father and son until death part then. Okay, thank you very much. Um, you, you made mention of, uh, you talked about your, um, how you know Christ now, and you said if you if had I known we are such Christ, a Christian, my husband should have been a Christian. Yes, you, you will tell us more about that and your journey uh, with Christ in, in Christianity. But that will be after this short break. Ma. We'll be going on a very short break. Uh, we're still with uh, Princess Nanangosi Dahiro. Please stay tuned. Now streaming, now analyzing, now assessing, now discussing. Now sharing your thoughts on everything and every issue that affects you. ACNN's Now Streaming discusses the issues trending and the matters that matter to us all. Join us every Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. on ACNN as we go in-depth into every issue that impacts our lives, our communities, and our country. Thanks for staying tuned and if you're just joining, this is still the exclusive interview with Princess Nana Ngozi Dahiru, a charismatic woman leader, human rights activist, a politician, an entrepreneur and a former member of Guild of Stewards 
in the Anglican Diocese of Abuja, Bible Study Coordinator and the Police Community Relations Committee Coordinator, National Women Committee. You're welcome. Uh, uh, we you. have been discussing your life, your uh, experiences, uh, your marriage, and now we want to talk about um, your journey with Christ. Uh, obviously, your perception now about Christianity and, and about Christ is different from what it used to be from uh, what you said before. I, I want you to analyze, analyze it for us. How did you view Christ then and how is it now? What, what is your experience? What is your greatest experience with Christ like? Before, as a born Christian, as a child, I was born into a Christian home, and my mother, my late mother, tried her best to show us that Christ is all. Maybe because we are children, and she gave what she had okay. as Christ. Yes. But when I came back to Christianity now, this word of God becomes my guide. I read it. When I read, I study, I mark, I ask God, help me. You know, we can never live up to expectation of God. Help me to channel my life according to your word here, according to your directions. The way I see Christ now, I know Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he died. That is not. Now I know the meaning of his death. Yeah. And I know that he died and resurrected. Because I have come to put my full trust in him. Okay. I've come to put my, I've tried him, tested him, and found him the only Savior. I fought so many battles for me. It wasn't easy when I came back to Christianity. It's not easy. It can never be easy. The one thing I must tell you is that since I came back to the church and became a Christian, become what they call Christian, no matter the trouble that come my way, I took it to him in prayer. I took it to him in prayer and expect results. But at times, if he hear me pray, he would think I'm fighting. <laughs> yes. Wow. When I went back to Christ, there was a lot of battle in my life. Spiritual battle here and there. As a Muslim, because I don't understand it. I did a lot of things. Friends, we say, ah, Let's go to see this man and let's go to see this Baba. Let's go to see this pastor. It were all vain. Mm. To that, if I say something, you may laugh. I, had, I don't have more than two or three priests I can call up in time of real spiritual battle. Say, pray for me. Pray along with me. This is what I'm going through. Mm. And I must assess you spiritually before I can ask for your prayer. It's not because you answer pastor <laughs> or because you are a priest, no. My spirit must go out to you that this is really my servant, servant of the living God. There are only three. So three priests. My vicar here now. My bishop in Okere is, is like a son. Mm. And he knows any time I call, say, my Lord Bishop, this is the uh, for you to call mommy it's serious. Let's pray. We'll continue praying. He knows the next thing is to give me some Bible versions that um uh, these things that I have to scriptures, use, yes. scriptures, scriptures like this thing that I have to use. He will just type them and send. Say, so use read these places, turn them to prayer. Mm. 
and may live. Just like my priest here, show away, Venerable show away. If I call him and say, he said, Mom, I say, I need prayer. I've been praying over this thing since I'm not getting hit with. I need your support in prayer. He to attend, say, Tell me, read so, so, please. I'll be praying along with you. Because he knows I don't call every time. Yes. I can pray myself out because I fought a lot of spiritual battles when I went back to Christ. A lot of things happened. A lot. But I stood. I said, Christ, if he did not answer me, it is your shame. You answer me, it is your glory. I'm not going back to Egypt. Hmm. I've come, I have come. So you don't have choice. Yes. I don't pray. Mm -mm. You don't have choice. You called me, I have answered. Prove to the world that you are whom I, call, I say you are. Everlasting King of Glory, the greater I am that I am, the mighty man in battle, that fought all battles, he never loses any. Prove to them that that is what whom you are. Not me, I know you already. And he answers me. I'm not a righteous person. Mm. He answers me. I can hit my chest and tell anybody. When I give people my testimony, what I went through in life, when I became, come, return back to Christ, they don't believe it. Because I don't wear my trouble on my face, no. No trouble is big enough to deface my beautiful face that Christ gave to me, no. Mm. If I deface it, why would people know that Christ is with me? I want people to see glory of Christ, even if I'm going through difficulty. Exactly. They must see the glory of God around me. Exactly. And say, ah, this one, this Wahala is not touching heart. He's touching me. May my Christ say, because he lives, he overcame, I will overcome. He overcome the world, I will overcome the world. That's right. I overcome the world. I don't have prayer contractors. I pray myself. Oh. And I know that Christ answers prayer. And he's very sweet. He does. Oh, he's a very sweet God. Follow him. The trouble will come. Some people will come. Mommy, I say, I will laugh. He said, Mommy, I say, you have not seen anything. I say, hold Christ. The moment you shift, Satan will kick you football. Because he wants you to shift so that he will rubbish you the more. Yes. So, Christ, this, he cannot see he's having trouble there. Mm. A lot. But you hold on to him, he will see you through them one after the other. And when he sees you through them, another one will come. They never stop coming. Still hold on to him. Still hold on to him. Continue testifying, even when, it, when you have not seen it. Satan will run away. For you to be grounded in Christ and to have the kind of trust in Christ, you must be a Bible reader lover. You must read their Bible. You must start with God every morning. In most of our homes, there is no altar. Mothers pray in their room. Fathers pray in their room. The ones that share room with their husband pray. Mother will maybe kneeling down praying while daddy is shaving, saying amen. <laughs> <laughs> they wake children up to pray, say they are too young, they are tired. For what? How? If you don't catch them young, you can't catch them. That's right. You can't catch them. I'm a living witness because I didn't catch my own young. I cannot catch them. But I'm not heartbroken because they are well behaved children that I am proud of them anytime, any day. God has blessed me with children that I am happy. I am proud of them anytime, any day. 
we, we, have, we have lost it in our upbringing of our children. You, don't li you lie. You tell a child not to lie. Why will he not lie? Why will she not lie? Fight. Let people know ah, she can fight. Oh. Yes. I disagree. And this is why I disagree. That's all. Why are you lying? You say one thing here, you turn to the other side, you say another thing. Christ wasn't like that. He wasn't like that. He rebuked those that were not getting it right. And they praised those. He said, come, we are, we are missing the road. You don't need to pretend in life. The journey to Christ is tough. Crooked, it's not smooth, but at the end it is sweet. That's correct. And there's no end of trouble for a child of God. Mm. No end to trouble for a child of God. But we will overcome, we will win them because he won. He made a public disgrace of Satan and death on the cross of Calvary. A public shame, public disgrace of them. So we will not give up. Prayer. Read your Bible. At times, there, there might be trouble, very, too much. I said, oh God, where do I start from this one? <laughs> where do I start from this? Mm. It's okay. Reminds me of the scripture that says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. When I get back home, I say, God, maybe I wake up midnight to, to complain. He said, just praise me. Wow. Most of the times I say, why should I praise you upon this trouble? He say, praise me. You will hear the voice clear. Some people say, I don't hear from God. No, you have not called him. You are not yet sincere in calling him. Wow. Run away from sin. Don't be a pretentious Christian. Be Christian. You know, Christians, we pretend a lot. Mm -hmm. We deceive ourselves a lot. Don't be a pretentious Christian. We, you can't be like Christ, but we can try to be like him. Straight. You can't tell another, say, hey, is that what I know? He tell you anything, he stands on it. I didn't see him, but I read it. Well, okay. Um, quite an inspiring experience, I must, I must say. Uh, we are going further. Um, part of your portfolio, Ma, read that you're a human rights activist. Activist, yes. Um, I, 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 <laughs> I care to wonder, um, what is activism to you, and what? <laughs> Just tell me about, <laughs> tell me about your... Should I call myself a <laughs> human rights activist? I don't know. Maybe my secretary saw me like that and put it like that on the, <laughs> on my profile. I don't know, I don't know if I can call myself that. All I know is anywhere I found myself, I stood for justice. Okay. I don't care whose ox scares. I stand for justice. I can never start watching you make injustice to any human being. No matter how highly pleased you are, I will tell you, no, it's wrong. Mm. It's wrong. Even if it means me using my own means to make sure that person gets justice, I do that. For, for, for this kind of, um, uh, well, you, you said you don't know if you see yourself as an activist, yes. but if you're a strong-willed person, uh, sometimes you, you might be seen as stepping on toes because when you want to stand uh, for justice, there are people who definitely disagree with you. Have you met any challenges as regards uh, standing for justice, saying the truth. My son, yes, ma if you stand for justice, you will always meet obstacles. You will always meet enemies. These enemies will return back and tell people, no, who said that? Is that mom? Is that hero? 
if she said it is true, his mommy diary is there. She will tell you the right thing. They cannot. Satan is not asleep. Do you think Satan? We look at Satan as that black, dark man. No, 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 no. As Christ is in us, the Holy Spirit is in us, those who agree and is using you. So Satan is in human being too. I don't care whom you are. Christ never cared whom the high and mighty Pharisees were. He told them the truth. If you speak the truth, you will die. If you lie, you will die. Why don't you speak the truth and see if God can even give you grace <laughs> for you to make heaven? Can you suffer here, finish, and still go to hellfire? That's what people don't understand because we even as Christians, some of us don't believe that hell is real. I stand on the truth. I don't care. This, any organization is similar. This, this, when I was in politics, when I was really active in politics, my chairman then, I started, I was at NPN. I started politics at the age of 24. Oh. My father, late father-in-law put me into politics at NPN. I would live north where I was, my husband was working. My driver would carry me to Kenya every month to go and do mission. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was as bad as that. <laughs> yes. So, you see, my chairman, uh, APGA chairman, or Progressive Grand Alliance chairman, then Savi Tume, who was later did senator for one term. When my son was getting, was marrying in Oka, we went for the marriage. He was there. He came. Tiaba, Deme Tiaba was there. She was the governor then. My, a lot of people. My husband came with his cabinet. Then he has taken over the throne of his father. His father okay. has died, yes. So when we went to Oka, when he came for the reception where we attended them, he looked at my husband. He said, I said, I'm not going to give my sister money alone. I will come to this marriage. I want to see the man that is marrying this, my sister. He said, this is your wife. If my wife is like her, I will allow her to do politics. Mm. But all what he said there that day shocked me because we fight every time. I didn't know he would have a kind word for me. You know, he's alive. Mm. He said, if every woman politician is like your wife, my wife will do politics. He said, she's good though. But when you want to show her, when you, when you bring Kerepu, Kerepu way, she will show you who she is. You see the other side of her. And she's not afraid of anybody. She's not afraid of marching on anybody's too. Stepping on anybody's to as long as it's for truth. He said, Your Royal Highness, you are, you are lucky. He said, I know my wife. No. So, whether you match people or you don't match people, you will die. The worst that will happen is people will start checkmating themselves for what they do when you are around. That's right. Yes. This PCRC we are doing, if I see anything wrong, if it concerns my national chairman, I pick my phone and call him. I say, so, 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 I don't think it's right. People should know you for something. And it's better for people to know you for truth, not because of your words. What is words? It will come, it will go. All of us are in poverty now, in Nigeria. Any riches again? No. Even the rich ones in put, they are poor because the number of people hanging on their neck now is more than what they can bear. So it's only your integrity you carry and meet God and to see if he can have mercy, if he can show you mercy enough to enter through that thin road. I tell people I'm not desperate about anything in life. My only desperation about life now is making heaven. And I remind God day in, 
they have admired my Lord Jesus. I say, they tell their papa, say this one, you go, you need grace to enter heaven. I cannot be qualified on my own because I know I cannot be qualified by my own on my own. No. But with His grace, He will help me. Wow. That is it. It doesn't matter who you, if you don't match human beings, it's good, I'm going to match. <laughs> Am I going to step on, on, on a cow leg, cow foot? It's human beings, human beings will step on their foot. That is why Nigeria finds itself where it is today. I don't want to say, they will say I'm the one. Mm. Look at what is happening everywhere. Deterration from since when every year is getting worse. When we change government, it gets worse than the past one. Because there's no more truth. If I tell him truth now, we'll not benefit. What are you benefiting? Look at us now. What are you benefiting? Look at Nigeria. For bandits to bomb plane. Plane. If that plane was not Black fruit. You know what could have happened? Oh. Well, you have, motor, you have money, you can't even enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, my Mosse. Um, uh, it's, it's quite inspiring uh, uh, listening to you speak, and I'm, I'm, I'm very sure the viewers will share such opinion to well. Thank you for uh, being with us all this while. We have come to the end of the part one of this exclusive interview with uh, Princess Nana Ngozi Dahiru. We'll be coming back uh, for the part two where we'll be talking about her life as a businesswoman, her life as a politician, and also her life in the PCRC. Stay with us uh, till we come back.